Half-Life 2 is considered to be one of the most defining and best shooters of all time. Everyone loves the gravity gun, the physics, the presentation, and the characters. Dr. Freeman, I presume. Everyone in the Grand Grands played it. Except, well, me. Yeah, I never did play Half-Life 2, and it's been in my library since 2008. Fast forward to a whopping 14 years later and just one day, out of the blue, I finally played the game from start to finish and it's a pretty good game. A perfectly good game with some great moments and some low points. But instead of going through the gameplay, the story, the graphics and so on like it's some review, I actually want to talk about the things I personally found interesting and what stood out for me. So if you're looking for some hopefully different and unique perspective on Half-Life 2, then sit back and enjoy. Why make this video? Why Half-Life 2? Two reasons. One, I've been trying to go through my library of games on Steam, Epic, and more. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has a huge backlog of games to go through. Two, I just was really curious about how Half-Life 2 plays in 2022. And I mean, I never did play the game. Now, I want to make a few things clear. I want to avoid retreading old ground as best as I can. It's a game that's been covered a lot since 2004, and so my goal here is not to go through the game like it's some overview. No, I'm going to talk about the things that stood out for me, something that has hopefully not been talked about enough. If I had to choose between creating or listening to an objective, detailed review of a piece of art, or create or listen to someone who might have something interesting and unique to offer, I'd go for the latter in general. And the first thing that might make my experience and perspective different from most people is that I didn't exactly play the vanilla game on my first go. Yeah, I played the game on my first go with a mod. No, it's not some wacky mod, like S mod. But I did play Half-Life 2 with a mod called M mod. M mod is basically Half-Life 2. If the guns felt better, if the visual effects got an upgrade, if you got a few new weapons, and just a lot of little touches. I won't go too deep into the feature set, but I mainly got the mod just so the weapons felt better. Which they do. I think there's a fair argument that I should have played the vanilla game first for my first playthrough. I did try to play the vanilla game first, but I just found the gunplay unsatisfying for reasons I'll get deeper into later. I don't really begrudge anyone using mods on their first go to spice up their experience. I guess as long as you're honest about it and bring it up as a caveat, then I think it's fine. Now, the first thing I think is worth praising is the cinematic qualities of the game. You have chosen, or been chosen, to relocate to one of our finest remaining urban centers. I know the word cinematic is usually used in a negative manner. Everything's so... cinematic. That's the problem. Games have stopped trying to be... games. Most people associate it with games trying to mimic movies solely through aesthetics alone. It's a shallow understanding of film by game developers and many cinematic games come off being superficial and juvenile because of that. No, no, no! Concentrate for God's sake! No argument there. But I don't think it's inherently a bad thing to be inspired or learn from films. Film is just another platform to tell a story. And I don't think most people have issues with games looking like movies. I think deep down, People just don't like poorly told, unsatisfying stories. While I wouldn't say the story in Half-Life 2 is noteworthy, the way it conveys its ideas and emotions through cinematic techniques is effective. Just in the opening 10 minutes of the game, Half-Life 2 just bombards you with this oppressive, authoritarian, and hopeless mood. The nods to 1984, the Eastern European city, which is synonymous with decay and oppression. 
the dehumanized oppressors, and much more. It's blunt, but effective. What are you going to do? And this environmental storytelling will be present throughout the entire game. I can't take it anymore. What are we going to do? And the expressive facial animations still holds up nearly 20 years later. Sure, it comes off a bit over exaggerated. It's not as realistic as mocap. Because next time, I'll kill everyone. But just like Bioshock Infinite, the expressions truly shine. Hello! Oh, this is wonderful! Well, come dance with me, Mr. T but it's not just the atmosphere these cinematic techniques highlight in Half Life 2. It even helps in the gameplay department. Like how does these set piece moments in a game? These moments add to the firefight. Making them more iconic and memorable. And come on. There's no way this scene wasn't inspired by saving Private Ryan. Another way cinema influenced the gameplay includes the lasers on the sniper rifles. Seeing a visible laser to know how you should get to cover ASAP is way more helpful than not having it. Having said all that, I wouldn't call Half-Life 2 a cinematic game. The term just has way too much baggage attached to it. But just like how I wouldn't say Mass Effect is a cinematic game, just because it employs a lot of cinematic techniques to convey the story and emotions, what I would say is Half-Life 2 has a lot of cinematic qualities that helps the story and the gameplay. Next, I want to talk about the pacing. The uneven pacing. On one hand, the game offers a lot when it comes to variety. A lot of new toys, new environments, new enemies, new challenges, and more are present throughout the entire game. I'd be lying if I said that Half-Life 2 never changed things up. But on the other hand, the game really milks whatever it can, until said new experience loses its novelty. In other words, you spend way too much time on these things. You got the hovercraft level, where the joy of speeding across the waterways and dodging enemy fire and mines fades away after the 15 minute mark, and yet the level goes on for another 30 or 40 minutes. Or the level at the coast, the game throws multiple gunships at you, and the guided rocket launcher just loses its wow factor after shooting a dozen or more rockets. Every level just feels like it's one or two sections too long. Take Raven home for another example. You just spent 30 minutes mowing down zombies. You meet a badass battle priest, and then he goes out in a blaze of glory. It's a good ending. Except it's not the ending, because the level continues for another 15 minutes, with you going through a mine shaft, killing little pests and doing some platforming. Now, does more content bother people? I can't speak for everyone. Some don't mind, or they actively seek out games that has as much playable content as possible. Me personally, I just prefer tighter experiences. Less filler, more killer. Now, something I found a bit irksome was how simplistic the story was. <laughs> I found the game's story too juvenile in morality and how it strokes your ego. I'm not going to talk about the actual story because, well, there's nothing really to talk about. It's just a bunch of things happening. There's no character arc, no major revelations. There's one betrayal later in the game, but 
We never even know why she did it. The only thing that matters in the story is that you stop the Combine. That's it. It's a blunt, good versus evil story. There's no shades of grey at all. The Combine are pure evil, and the Rebels are lovable underdogs. How pure evil are the Combine, you ask? Well, mass arrests, beatdowns, mowing down unarmed civilians. Oh, and uh, they're literally dehumanized. So, when you gun down these guys, you are not supposed to sympathize with them. Cover me! Oh man! I mean, you know, uh, I don't want to shoot nobody! They're just I robots, mean... Morty! It's okay to shoot them, they're robots! What's also juvenile about the story is that the game really strokes your ego by having characters worship you like you're some messiah. Great Scott! Gordon Freeman! Dr. Freeman, I presume. Uh, that's not who I think it is. Indeed it is. This is the Freeman. The Combine's reckoning has come. And I've got Gordon Freeman. Dr. Freeman, you're kidding. Gordon Freeman! Hell, Jordan Freeman. And about time. Dr. Freeman? We're coming with you. If you hear Dr. Freeman, we can finally make some headway. Don't forget to reload, Dr. Freeman. Very unsubtle. And a part of me couldn't shake off this feeling that a certain little film had some influence on the game. He is the one. Mm-hmm. Matrix. You got the whole humanity versus machines, or underdogs versus authority, and you got the messiah worship. Gordon? No. The vibes I get from both Matrix and Half-Life 2 is teenage rebellious wish fulfillment, where you're like the one taking on the man and the establishment. Now, I'm not saying the juvenile story is a significant turnoff. I do think it's a missed opportunity though. You have this great and detailed world, with expressive characters and yet no moral complexity at all. That's not to say black and white stories can't be good, but I do prefer stories that make players ask questions. Go on, get the fuck out of here. Questions that has you reflecting on your actions, or actions by others. Are you risking the lives of innocent people who just want to live a quiet life, even under occupation? Do the rebels resort to extreme measures to defeat the Combine, even if it results in collateral damage? So, I guess I just love looking at complicated situations from different angles. It's just way more engaging for me, and stirs up way more emotions than just gunning down some irredeemable bad guys. Speaking of gunning down bad guys, something I didn't really enjoy was the gunplay. I just wasn't a big fan of it. It's not bad, but it definitely feels like it's missing something. It's missing a sense of weight and kick to them. That and the enemies are bullet sponges. And the ragdolls just feel floppy and weightless. This is where M-Mod sorta comes in. The weapons definitely sound heavier and more impactful. There's even little nice touches, like when you're low on ammo, and the guns just sound a bit different. Now with the bullet sponges, there is a mod to make the enemies drop faster, but I didn't use it on my first go. I think it definitely makes the guns feel better, when enemies don't soak up bullets though. As for the ragdolls, there's no fix or solution to it. I grew up on games that had dramatic, expressive death animations. And to be fair to Half-Life 2, there's still no game that's ever really made ragdolls look realistic or rewarding. 
we are probably a long ways off from emulating movies too. Still, I don't think the gunplay was bad, it's just unremarkable. The mods help a bit, but it still definitely feels dated. But again, not bad. What is bad though, is the final 3 hours of the game. That's how I would describe the final stretch of the game. Too repetitive, too frustrating, too overwhelming. The game just throws swarms upon swarms of enemies, waves of combine soldiers, drones, and these monstrosities that eat up like 7 entire rockets. Yes, 7, and you can only carry 3 rockets at a time. Don't worry though, cause you fight like 5 or more of these guys too. It's just an exhausting onslaught, and I found the game way harder than anything prior, especially when enemies are swarming from all sides, something that never really happened before. Now thankfully, there is a break from this onslaught. You eventually get to the tower, and you're blessed with the most stupidly fun, most broken weapon in the game, the Mega Gravity Gun. It sends anyone and everything flying with ease. It's a massive and welcome change of pace. At last. Until, once again, the game milks it till it loses its wow factor. Because you'll be blasting away at enemies over and over again. Now, this is kinda unfair of a comparison, but there's a game called Resistance 2 that did this overpowered sequence, but better. At the end of the game, after mowing down enemies with your firearms, you get psychic powers, and you just go to town with them. How long is this thrill ride? 4 minutes. Yep, 4 minutes. It's perfect. Short and sweet. The last thing I want is to be bored by this pure, raw, unstoppable fun. Wish I could say the same about Half-Life 2. On a positive note though, at least the game ends strong. You actually need to do some platforming and use the gravity gun in this puzzle-like boss fight. And the final cutscene leaves a strong impression that I won't be forgetting anytime soon. Maybe we still have- I enjoyed my time with Half-Life 2. I know that might not come across after I just spent most of my time critiquing it, but I just wanted to bring up the things that stood out for me. I didn't want to go over every single thing I liked, just what I found interesting personally. I definitely would love to cover more games through this approach in the future, but till then, this is where I get off. I'm Sam Blips. And thanks for watching. I'd like to thank LD Claudius and Nati for backing me on Patreon. I really appreciate any kind of help on my channel, whether it's Patreon, liking the video, commenting on it, or subscribing. It all helps. Thank you.